Thank you so much. That was so lovely and flattering. Um, hi, good morning. I'm really happy to be here, and um, I will speak up. Uh, I'm like a Gen Z, or I guess millennials do this too. But Gen Xers, not so much. But um, I am uh, going to read a poem by Robert Pinsky, <clears throat> um, who was supposed to be here this morning, and um, who I had the good fortune of working with for many, many years. He was my teacher, and then he was my boss, and um, now he's my friend. I met him tw almost 28 years ago. Um, and of course, I lost the poem. <laughs> Thank you to Drew and to Chard for putting this together. And I'm going to read a poem by Robert called Soul Making. Galactic broth, visible light years away, brews the first suns. Familial, I feel I know these lights. I see their prebiotic geometries of purpose, the way I impose human, nearly literary intentions onto the microscopic animals, flexing bizarre mandibles that patrol my eyelids and guts. Brothers and sisters electronically revealed, arcane mute dynasties of being. Darkling, I too perform the turns and bits of my assigned proportions. Feigning rapt comprehension, I know you the way an infant pretends amazement each time the mother with a spoon tip searching under the jar's rim finds more and yet more of the strained apricots and apples. Infant, the sunflower turns toward her, deep Egypt of shared attachment and concealment, tangy preserved sweetness, forging in turn the courtly generation of Call it a soul. So, um, aware of the time. Uh, Chard, is there a break after, between me and Sarah? How does this work? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware. Good. Um, Bianca, that was great. Um, loved that reading and I feel like we could go on the road together. So um, after, uh, after my last book, I didn't write for about uh, four years, I think. And um, I was trying to find a way into telling a particular story. And I think, um, you know, myth is a story that doesn't end. Myth is a story we tell over and over again and that different people tell in different ways. And sometimes you wake up and you realize you're, you're living inside of a myth. Um, and so that became my way into this next book, which comes out in 2026. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to read new poems from that book. Middle school. Persephone and her friends brought waxed paper cups of ice cream to the meadow by the river. They tasted each other's flavors. Their laughter made ripples a heron mistook for alewives underwater. Under some of their shirts, the first hiccups of puffy nipples. They huffed webbed dandelions whose wishes floated in the air with a pop song throbbing tinnily from a neon phone. Ants gathered on a plastic spoon. Who knew the earth would open? It was Tuesday in a small town. They lay on their backs daydreaming into each other's pierced ears. And I'll read a few of these. There's a <clears throat> series within the book called um, that are metamorphosis poems. Metamorphosis. 
Sometimes you seem to want to make something dazzling from your rage. You knew I liked it, the antique mirror I bought at a dusty storefront run by sisters. You grunted when you swung it from the wall and flung it to the floor. For an instant, bits of slivered glass fell up like inverted rain. Sure enough, it cut me, and it took years to pull the crumbs of glass out of the wall. Persephone's friends. When her story tore open, they ghosted. Dandelion gossamer, ducklings paddling hell for leather into the cover of cattails. Then they biked into the blue afternoon of average adolescence. At home, they sulked in closed room bedrooms and griped about setting the table. They unfollowed her on Instagram and blocked her cell. They cropped her out of images and didn't say her name, except to agree she never really was that great a friend, and maybe she was asking for it, braless in that tank top. So, <clears throat> when old, old myths intersect with <laughs> new things, um, and this poem, um, is uh, composed almost entirely of um, snatches from uh, traditional nursery rhymes um, and is uh, meant to represent the sort of nonsense one can encounter in the American mental health care system. Emergency fugue. If this is a true life, the little dog laughed, Hang up, and the clinician will, as a shepherdess should, in 30 to 60 days, diddle diddle, return your ring around the rosy and call it macaroni. If this is a life, what is your reason to speak to the hickory dickory doctor? He's here we go round the press zero to speak to. He's going to the fair. He's here we go. He's eating Christmas pie. Sing he, sing ho, sing hang up the phone. The kittens have gone to St. Paul's. Hang up and dial, and how many times has the little lamb sat on a wall? Nine, ten, a good fat hen. Nine, one, one, what's your hot cross buns? A man of words, a knot of deeds, is not a thread and needle, though all the words he ever spoke were fiddle, faddle, fetal. Are there any full de riddle firearms in the house? Lol de riddle, no, sir. And are there any pills? Hush a bye, baby. Go over the stile. Go to the stable. The night is so raw. It's raining, it's pouring. Cock robin, farewell. The wind is in the east, and pussies in the well. A branch gave way, and Simon fell. Hickory dickory, who'll toll the bell? <laughs> Lament. This obviously pulls from um, the myth, the Persephone Demeter myth. Lament. Before you were born, I gave you the meadow. I gave you the soil, the seed, and the plow. I gave you a home in my body, a home in my house, in my temple, the reverence of people, my thin tapered ankles. I made you immortal. I made you a mirror of everything precious. I made you a basin of nectar, ambrosia, a bed of narcissus shot through with stars. Later, I let you unravel and tantrum. I let you coat your eyes with ash and dye your hair a thunderous sunrise. I let you, I gave you, I held you, I made you, but I couldn't save you. I couldn't save you. Metamorphosis. I'm just not doing a lot of banter. I'm trying to let the poems do their thing. Metamorphosis. Now and now and never often enough, or bright or light or dark enough. This need to change the filter, find the right who in the mirror with the right hair. The trip to Walgreens, always an emergency, something semi-permanent to stave off changes cut in stone. 
Your roots are ravaged, stunned by bleach. So the hair hardly grows now, and short shed bits get wet and stain the countertop with stubborn threads of red and blue and black and red again. In the sunlight, which you keep from your dark room with ice blue strip lights streaking like a scar along the ceiling, I have seen a halo of prismatic fire flaring from the tips of your slit ends. Metamorphosis. Because the face you saw was not the one you wanted, you made with a bright steel brad two cockeyed holes in the skin between your brows and bled all over the barbell. You tried to ram through them, half laughing in the TikTok I saw later at the way the silver stud ends skewed diagonal. You told me that the marks were acne scars, but fessed up the day you used a safety pin to stab the web-like membrane connecting upper gum to lip and asked if you could keep it as if the mutilation were a kitten or a frog. What was I supposed to say? That I like you the way you came? I did what any broke down woman would and drove you to a place called Pierced Utopia at the Saugus Mall, where a human with a spangled face plunged a needle through your perfect nose. Metamorphosis. The bluish underside of your left arm is from wrist to elbow, latticed with white and pink lines. The bandus of their overlapping is like a game of pickup sticks. The stakes are graver, the lines a ladder, leading to the next time you need to try to get the hell out of you. The little windows between the lines recall the times we draw with sidewalk chalk, teetering hopscotches the length of the whole block and throw pea gravel from under the gutters to show us how far we could go on the Sisyphean path to starting over again. Never long enough to make the game go on forever. So, um, I think I'll, I'll read maybe three more. Um, this is Hermes. There are a couple of poems that um, take on voices of different characters um, in the myth. Hermes. Hermes is the one who went down after Zeus said that it was okay that Persephone could come home for part of the year. Um, so um, Persephone is, is kidnapped by Pluto, her uncle, um, after Bianca mentioned the, the daffodil desired by the god, um, Persephone picks this daffodil and out boils a chariot. Um, it was a trick. And uh, so, you know, Demeter is really mad um, and no one is really helping her. Um, and then finally it's Hermes who goes and, and resurrects Persephone. So this is that moment. Uh, and after the next poem I'll read is um, a portrait of Demeter's rage. Hermes. The deeper I got in the fathoms of darkness, the more lost I was from even the idea of light. In the airless room, I found Demeter's daughter, slack as a cadaver, the girl she was, almost invisible, wax cheekbones cupping chasmal wells. Lifting her off the sofa was like trying to hold a dream in your head at the edge of sleep. Hell was cold, so I buttoned my coat. I pressed a stethoscope to her temple and heard a quiet, unkept scuffling like a mouse behind a wall. I asked to borrow the chariot that swept her up those months ago. That's how it is. The way out of hell looks a lot like the way in. On lithium, vralar, lamictal, I called to hell's immortal horses.
So as I, when I was working on this poem, I, um, you know, so many things inform our, our poems, um, aside from kind of the initial ideas that generate them. And um, I was thinking a lot also about uh, climate change when I wrote this poem. Um, <clears throat> because Demeter kind of torched the earth because she was mad. The things I do. Before I burned the earth, I tore my hair. Someone could have stopped me then. The branches I ignited were to seed my search. A speeding bird, I scoured land and sea for my lost cause, my stolen seed and no one said a fucking word to me. The silence fed my silence, fed my grief. I went inside myself. I didn't wash or eat. I hid inside a hood and cropped up old under the olive trees. Before I burned the earth, I loved another woman's baby. Someone could have stopped me, let me raise him, let me love him like I hid him from his mother in a cleansing fire, a metal brand. I claimed him, tried to save him from his mortal fate. He wasn't hurt, the opposite. His useless mother wrenched him back, that bitch. I turned another boy into a newt. In tears, his mother watched me do it. Call me savage. Why should someone else have what I can't? After that, there was no stopping me. I quit my job. I held a razor to Earth's wrist, my own. I bent the tools, broke the plows. I hid the seeds and choked the field with stubborn grasses, scorched the yield with rock. I called the shots. I cut the shoots. I summoned rain and sun and hungry birds. I let small children starve and cows with calves. I am not proud, but what choice did I have? Like corn and barley, they were mine to kill, and I would have what's mine by any means. You stupid humans still can't seem to gather, can't begin to glean. It was for love I burned the goddamn world. Metamorphosis. I think this will be the last one I read. And um, I did have an editor um, ask me for some to see some poems, and uh, and then tell me that um, the poems were not uplifting enough. <laughs> and I just had to say, well, you know, the nature of the book I'm writing, this one is. Uh, I'm, I'm not long on uplifting. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's sort of weird. I feel like I should have, I should insert, there, there are some funnier poems in these <laughs> books. I feel like maybe I, I'm going to have to like adjust my, my set. But um, a lot of these is the first time I'm ever reading out loud in a public space. And I'm like running out of breath. But, um, This is the last uh, metamorphosis poem in the book. Metamorphosis. In white sunlight, we unzip the lid of the habitat, a miniature pop-up hamper. The butterflies had arrived by mail, still worms, spindled and sharp-looking, little tailless seahorses unfurling in a plastic tub with goo at the bottom, like suet, the caterpillar's food dotted with frass. I didn't point out that they shit where they eat or that painted ladies sounds like a polite term for prostitutes. We were to keep them misted and away from bright windows. The webbing wasn't worrisome, we read. In the wild, it kept them stuck to plants, and they could pull the silk to close a leaf around them and hide from bad guys. For days, nothing happened. You hunched next to the buffet, watching yourself watch them in the mirror. From the doorway, I watched the way your hair curled at the base of your neck as you sweated, the way your t-shirt when you sprayed the mister showed your tan lines. You were there when one let go a ghost, a gauze of skin almost too soft to see. After we moved the paper disc affixed with shivering chrysal chrysalides, 
After more boring, thrilling days of waiting, the pods darkened and the first one ruptured into a crumpled butterfly, a bald batik handkerchief spilling from a pocket. Next came the slow calico explosion, the beating and pulsing that burst the wings into being. You may not remember, but I do. You were beside yourself, pulsing, triumphant, Four hatchings and two days of sugar water later, it was time to let them go. You weren't sad. We'd read it was the right thing to do. You toted the mesh shillinger out to the picnic table, a lantern of flashing movement. You opened the flap just enough to let one land, a leftover scuff of polish on your fingernail, your teeth still short and rounded, two rows of sugar pearl corn. The sun shone down as one by one you launched them into the air like so many futures that couldn't come true. Thank you.